Hello everybody, welcome back to episode 24 of my tutorial series. It's been a while since the last episode went up, and that's been because I, I've been a little bit derpy. So, you see, I didn't save the last time I recorded an episode, so I had to redo all the stuff that I did in the last episode. So, to give you a quick impression, the haggard child is still loose in the, in the fortress. I haven't... I missed the moment that I had in the last episode, and now he's still he's still on the loose. And I restructured the the area down here. I went with that rather impractical but somehow funny looking uh, design here. And well, let's just say I've counted the bedrooms, and when these are dug out, we roughly have around 150 to 160 ish uh, bedrooms, and then we just need to staff them out. I'm sorry that uh, maybe something will be a little bit bitty up a day, but I, I did my best. So over here, we're going to do the new dining hall. I have already carved out the basics because I really think that's uh, that's a great uh, that's going to be a great spot. And today, I want to do with you together a library that's been on my mind because I feel like uh, we we can gain a a lot of happiness when we when we do the library business. And I want to uh, finish out the barracks here, so the second squad can go on duty. I also want to work a little bit and have fun with those uh, caged goblins. Maybe we can find time for that. We'll see about that. So I saved here right after the uh, siege that I also recorded the last time. This time we had a few more melee goblins, but honestly that... That didn't really matter. And do I see a Billon bar to be smeltered? No, of course not. So, library. Let's get back to business. So, when we want to go for a library, we need a paper industry first. So, we have already moved the agriculture and the majority of the uh, agricultural business down here. So, this is our new kitchen. I have here a little bit of an irrigated farm. That should be really enough for all of our business that we require for now. So my idea was that we're going to produce the paper actually upstairs here. For starters, we're going to use that gear. And uh, well, we could actually slam on the uh, the automated millstone. Hmm. We'll see about that. So first off, why a library? Libraries are really cool generators for positive thoughts, and they are, in general, a, a investment that gives more immersion to your to your fortress because your dwarves will start writing books about all manner of stuff. It will attract people from the outside world, and sometimes a necromancer visits your place, writes a book about necromancy, and you suddenly have a necromancer plague in your fortress. But that's only one of the many things that can happen with a library. So. Before we go and set up the industry behind that, let's localize the library. My idea was that we're, we're going to go for a library that's going to sit some something like in here. Uh, I figured that I'd like to have a bit more grandeur here in the, in the fortress, you know, larger rooms and the like. And this is going to be the library. We got a lot of work in, uh, in front of us. And there's also the issue right now that we really have have a big struggle in front of us getting enough beds and doors and, and everything because you know we are churning out those beds in quite a uh, fast pace but uh, yeah there's just a lot of work to be done so let's see if we can help our dudes a little bit but there is a strange mood coming up of course always something but let's uh, let's place down those beds all right so and we got a caravan. Awesome. This is really good because the caravan is going to help us out with a little bit of a problem that we got right now. And that's our food and drink situation. When you got a population of 150, it really, really can grow tens when your numbers are that low. Because of that, we're going to do a little bit of an analysis what's happening here. Because I see that there's 200 plants here, but uh, food and drink are rather low. So that, that's a little bit odd. So let's check this out. First off, we're going to remind ourselves that the weaver will have another pop-up. And let's check on out what's in the plants tab. 
um, problem analysis like this is really, really important the older your fortress grows. So let's check this out. We got all that stuff. Yeah, okay. So you can either shift scroll or I personally like to do this. So we got a lot of plants here. 178 plump helmets. So wow, we are, we're stacked. And quarry bushes. So that's, uh, th that's an issue. So, you know, quarry bushes shouldn't look like that. Um, this is unprocessed. This means we won't get seeds back. I bet all the farms that are supposed to have uh, quarry bushes are empty by now. Let's see. Oh, well, we have we have rock nuts. Or, let's see. What I'm trying to say here is... Let's make sure we have a work order that has process plant to back. Yes, we have that. Alright. So, everything's fine. Good. So, yeah. The gist of it is, we checked that we have everything in order, we don't have enough food and drink still, so what can we do here? I see that I have one still, and I have a kitchen that's not running. Let's get upstairs and check out the other workshops that we got there. So, I have uninstalled pretty much most of the things. I left the farmer's workshop here because I really like it. The uh, staircase here is leading directly to the farms and the animal processing is quite good this way. So why is the kitchen not working? Let's check this out next because that's a little bit weird, isn't it? So let's see. Sadly, no search function for the uh, for the work order area, but I I feel like is there even a work order for, for cooking food? It doesn't look like it. I bet I had a work order linked to the kitchen, and when I deconstructed the kitchen, this work order disappeared. So let's fix that as well. So here we go. We're going to go over all these today. So, you know, at first I was uh, not that detailed with all these things, but I think now we can go really deep because you should now understand things well enough. So I brought up all three of these and we're going to configure them accordingly. So we're going to say you need a little bit of cooking stuff and simple meals, please only do them if we have like uh, less than 100 meals. Fine meals, please do these only if we have less than 500 meals or let's say 100 meals, 200, 200, that's okay. And the lavish meals, they should always cook mostly lavish meals. That's why I'm setting this up like that. And you guys cook lavish meals until we have 1,000. That's okay. All right, so I leave these work orders as as they are because I really don't mind if food is being overproduced. It's, it's fine. Overproduced food, it's fine. As long as it's stored, it's going to be A-OK. -okay. All right, so we have set up these, but the other thing that crossed my mind is I feel like we, we really should have more, more space to work with. So we're going to carve out a new section here, priority one, because I figured that food production is of utmost importance. So let's see. Yo, or Haggard Child is uh, going crazy again. So let's see if we can wall him in somewhere. Well. We'll see about that. Oh, blue jade. Stuff you find when you just want to mine out. But this is a beginner world, so it's, it's super rich in, in minerals. It's crazy how many minerals you got here. So we're going to do one extra kitchen here. And one extra still here. And then we're going to monitor it a little bit. If the food numbers grow accordingly, everything's going to be going forward as we want to see it. Holy, you little, I, it, it just killed him. Yeah. Oh boy, haggard, haggard dwarf children are, are beasts, you know. So let's see, he punched him in the leg, he punched him in the hand, I bet he strangled him too. No, he punched him in the neck and, uh, oh boy, that's, uh, that's a shame. Should really expel that person from our society as soon as we can. <laughs> so, I mean, as you see there, this is uh, this is how bad things can go. But what what's really really important here is th that kid just killed the doctor. We need to bring the doctor back or assign a new one. This is really really important. So, 
Chief Medical Dwarf still alive. So I'm sorry, we're going to get back to the library in a second. We just have a few emergencies here. So uh, let's see. Burp, God, Diagnostician, Bone Doctor, yep, everything's fine. So we got to lock uh, away this dude. So he, he feels, fo she feels fondness. It's, it's a girl, damn. All right. So let's get done this next part here. Slap down a couple of furniture pods here. Oops. All right. Still a little bit shocked about what happened there. <laughs> so seven, but that's one part I, I really like about Dwarf Fortress. And that's the fact that, you know, it's a shame when somebody dies, but it's not the end of the world either. All right, so let's set up a barracks here and assign this one to the uh, spread fountains. Yes, that's their name. So they can now do their uh, do their training there. So schedule them to permanent training, and we're going to see how that'll work out for them. And uh, until then, let's check out if the library area has been dug out. And the answer is yes. Wonderful. So first things first, we need to announce Erzone. And then we're going to we're going to do all the rest. Okay, so here we go. And meeting area transforms into library. And now we need bookcases, tables, and chairs. And we need to assign scholars and scribes, but that is not necessary before we have made a paper industry. Um, so Okay, well, what a day. We really need to get rid of that haggard child. It's uh, it's bad for for him, for the fortress. So let's see if we can get a uh, hold on this little girl here. I mean, the worst part about it is I'll leave it like it is now. Let's uh, check out this here. The worst part about it is that the uh, hacker children are going to be like that for the rest of their life, and you cannot prosecute them because they are Im they are immune against uh, against justice. So that's that's really bothersome. Okay, but back to business. We're going to go now for the um, paper industry. So. Paper is made like that. Let's go upstairs. You go to the kern and you mill plants into slurry, and then you go over to the screw press and press that slurry into paper, and that paper is being transformed into scrolls and choirs. So the thing here is, and that's the issue there, the um, automatically weave all thread setting is going to is going to have to go now. Because the thing is, pigtail is the material that you will mash into slurry. But when you have the weaving automated, all the pigtail will automatically be woven into pigtail thread and uh, or processed into that. And yeah, altogether, we, we don't want automatic weaving anymore. So let's see. So as you see here, you Uh, processing plants. We have to make sure now, a little bit uh, all over the place right now, we have to make sure that we now don't process away all the uh, all the pigtail that we got. And therefore, we have to check mark this. I've forgotten if we process the pigtail first, but I think we do. So let's make sure this will happen. And we will only do the, uh, yeah, that's the one. I, I talk nonsense there, sorry. You can't leave the, uh, you can't automate the, the thread weaving, of course. Because thread is made into cloth. This game has so many industries in between that it, uh, that, that it really, uh, that it really gets me to, um, makes me dizzy at times, but the trick that I personally like to use is the following trick. So we go on over to the current because the millstone is unreliable right now, and we mash plant into slurry. So as you see there, we cannot specify which one. So we're going to make that 
if the amount of slurryable plant is greater than, than one. That's great. So we want to slurry it as, as possible, but we're only going to do this if there is, let's say less than, less than two globs. We never want to make too much of that. We want to make a, a moderate production. And now let's get on over to the screw press. And now we go and define the paper sheet production. So we're going to go, go and do this whenever there's a glob, but we're only going to do this if there is uh, less than 10 sheets of paper. So ultimately we're going to fill up the, the pick tech, we are going to fill up the production first with paper, and then when, when paper is satisfied, we're going to transform the rest of the pigtail again into cloth. At least that's how it should work. So to get this uh, working now, the, the trick that I like to use is I just uh, put the, the job back up there. And uh, because this is a pain, because you need to click it every time, my trick here is follow the, uh, follow the blank scroll. So the important thing is this needs to be above plant processing and then you're good to go because this way this job will always be assigned in the in the queue before plant processing and everything is okay then it'll check this before but I think I also configured it correctly if I have mixed up something please let me know in the comment section I know that this uh, works but I'm pretty sure that you could make it more efficient but I never broke my uh I never bothered uh, making my, making it uh, perfectly fine. This works. That's all I can say. <laughs> oh boy. So paper production is probably because it mixes into the um, into the uh, cloth production like that. One of the most uh, bothersome things. And uh, here, if you don't want to do the sorting game like I did here, um, the e easier part is just delete both jobs and put them in after another, so you can sort them around. Little things, but now we have uh, we have that, and now we can get uh, on over and set up the rest of the paper industry. We're almost done with it, promise. So we now go on over to the Crafts Dwarf Workshop, and now we are going to make rock scroll rollers, because scroll rollers are a thing you need. So we're going to make these until we have, let's say, three, but not too often. And then we get on over and we make scrolls. You need first the rollers and then the, to make the scrolls. And here we're going to go for, nah, not this. We're going to create three scrolls in advance. So just lower numbers. And at the Crafts Dwarf workshop, we make choirs. That's uh, books basically. And uh, these, well, we're going to just leave like five on storage. And now we just have to have to let a little bit of time pass and hopefully everything will work. If not, we're going to do an analysis, why not? The last time I set it up like that, it did work. <laughs> okay, so let's head back to the library, shall we? So this thing won't work because there's just, um, you know, too much of a mess there, and we need a grave for the, for the doctor. Poor, poor guy, man, poor guy. So we're going to make a, uh, a a burial spot for several people here again. So I put up a few coffins in advance, so to say. It sucks a little bit because you need to accept it every time, but it's very, very, uh, it's very, very room efficient, you know. All right. So with that being set up, let's put up some furniture inside here. So we need bookcases. I hope I have some pre-produced. Yeah, let's make a, let's put up one of them, some of the more beautiful ones. Let's do this. So this is where the books will be stored at. Then we require tables and chairs. These are for writing. I don't know if people read on these as well, but uh, there we go. And then a chest. Ooh, pigtail trousers, artifact. Nice, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm proud of you. Okay, so now we got the uh, furniture setup done. 
There we go. And now we need to assign scholars. So, oh my god, legendary observer. Mm, nice. So we're going to set the... Uh, let's see. I don't like to put people that are really, really important for the fortress at into this job of the scholar. So let's see. The fun part is everybody will write about what they uh, what they know best. So uh, let's see. Hmm. Let's put no. Let's say not none of the ex dwarfs. <laughs> don't want to put up military people, so. Dabbling, I also don't want. As you see there, they are, uh, let's put up another cheese maker there. All right, good. So scholars, they write new books and scribes, they copy books. So for now, I, I just want to uh, let them write books. We're going to think about copying books some other time. So standard thing is that the library is open for all visitors. We're going to leave it for now like that because I want to, I'm open for trouble, you know, it's fine for me. And uh, here, when when I mass place um, down furniture like that, I like to use uh, the uh, closest material thing because, you know, we're, we're, we're going to empty our stockpiles anyway, so it's okay. It's okay. All right, so it'll now take a while until we have enough pigtail. So, oh yeah, there there is another thing. I, I fixed something in the last from the last episode. So uh, when I tried to do the plant gathering, my mistake was to make a custom detail for it. Plant gathering is actually a pre 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 made job. So um, I was talking about that uh, the skill level of your plant gatherer is influencing the uh, the the harvest and therefore it's quite important to have good people there so let's check out what's uh, happening here so the still is working the stills are working but uh what about the kitchen so i see that we don't have too much fish let's check out if there's any problem so do we have prefer zones for water drinking prefer zones for fishing i don't have any standing orders for that so do i have fisher dwarfs well yes i do so question is do they not fish because they uh they don't uh, find an area to do so or well we're going to set up a a water source area here and a fishing zone right next to that. And we're going to see if that'll change something. Okay. Another thing we can now grow, uh, go and uh, gather some stuff from the, uh, from the surface that also always helps to bring up this, the food stockpiles because I'm a little bit worried about that. So let's go and do the trading. Yeah, I hope I didn't derp that out too long. So. Why is the, what's that red cross meaning? Toggle whether good banned by export mandate are listed or not, so. What kind of goods are now um, banned? We're going to check this out in a second. All right, so let's do this real quickly. I hope that we're going to have somebody working there. And the last thing that I want to do is, uh, yeah, that's that's all fine. I mean, we got so many quarry bush leaves. It's, uh, it's actually a joke that nobody is working in the kitchen, so. Let's see if they cancel that for any reason. No, they don't. All right. So. Yeah, so the, the manager is not managering yet. So let's check out. that. That's in this uh, regard the problem. So let's see what our manager is doing. And we get more, even more migrants. Holy moly. 
All right. So that's that's quite tragic. We don't need more people. Okay, so let's check out what our manager is doing because that's actually really, really important that we got that and uh, export of earrings is prohibited. Oh yeah, that's, uh, we got one really, really charming person there. Hmm, I see that already. So it's uh, something that's bothering me that you can't, uh, look for the the person there directly but uh, luckily i he's he's busy worshiping okay tell you what man you're you're fired you're not managing good enough so let's see why is everybody in the military such a good manager <laughs> okay so let's reassign that uh I feel like we had an office here, yeah. So I hope the new manager will manage now, because that's that's actually the issue, you know. That's uh, that's the entire issue that these jobs haven't been assigned to the to the workshops, and that's that's it. That's it, you know. That's it. The managers ain't main main managing, but yeah, here. So I, I have the uh, feeling it could be that my manager got stuck into something that's called a worship loop. Um, sometimes your, uh, your, your dwarves just go bonkers and they stick in a, uh, in, a, in a habit forever. Why? Don't know. It's just like that. You can reset them somehow, but uh, it ain't that easy. Okay, so let's check out our second military squad. Oh, look at them. They're almost geared up. Nice. All right, so let's have a quick look at our, uh, at our bars situation. Do we still have enough? Uh... No, we don't. All right, so we, we ran out of, uh, we ran out of coke. Ah, yeah, well, so that's, that, that's because I, I set up my, my smithy jobs in a bad manner. So we run out of coke regularly because in these work orders there there should be a, a limiter like that. The amount of refined coal has to be larger than 10. And if not, you don't smith. So I bet that I have lots of little uh, jobs in here and that's, that's typical beginner mistakes. That's uh, why I really don't mind. And I really like to illustrate mistakes like that because I feel like it's really a great uh, way to showcase why why these things are so important why it's it's really just one click you know you get used to it when you when you run it longer but it's such a useful little click because now i have to re uh, i have to re kick start my entire um my, my entire industry here and uh, that kind of sucks you know and that's only because i i didn't um, do this so be smarter than me and put the refined coal thing in there little lessons but honestly the um this sector here this whole work orders thing don't expect to be done with this part anytime too soon because there, there's really just so freaking much room for improvement for for further adjustments changes and uh, whatnot it's it's it, it's amazing it's a pain and it's a pleasure at the same time all right, so let's hope that the paper industry will kick into gear at some point, and or uh, or our serial killer girl is on the loose again. So maybe maybe we can lock her in now at some point in the near future. I basically just have to wait until she uh, she's walking into some area there. So right now I think she's just killing some uh, some. Uh, some animals and uh, fighting with an animal trainer this girl's a beast so now we we get the food situation back up and we have the trader and everything up there so now the real 
bothersome thing is we're not allowed to sell any any earrings, but uh, well, that's going to be quite easy. The caravan here is full with food, which is amazing. We're, we're just going to buy everything, you know? We're just going to buy everything except for cheese, you know? Don't buy the cheese. The cheese is, uh, is horrible because it's... Um, it's too costly for for what it provides as a uh, as a rule of thumb. All right, everybody. So I'm going to do my little trade here off camera and uh, just click through these things. And I hope you found this helpful. I'm a little bit insecure if I did anything wrong about the uh, paper industry, but uh, don't worry. That's a that's normal. That that's always like that. Oh, you get these uh, shown in pink. That's nice. So uh, we're going to check check that, or you find in the comment section anything to uh, improve this or, or whatever. I really love to hear from you guys who are such a helpful bunch. And uh, that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next time we're going to go for the uh, for the prisoner's promise. I know that I promised you some prisoner action, but I didn't provide this time. Next time I will already prepare a room for that so you guys can have some fun with these. So. Thanks for watching everybody, leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed, consider subscribing, I'd be delighted if you did so. Feel free to drop me a... Uh... oh, now I lost the track. Whatever, playlist link down there, check them out, there's also the other tutorials I did. Have a wonderful day and see you guys next time.